Well, here we are, day two. It's another preliminary day, the last day before the quarterfinals. And while there was some stuff last night, I went out earlier today and in the Kowloon area, I was totally fine. But um, now I'm back at the stadium and there's a university right next to the stadium and, uh, you know, clearly protesting going on. <laughs> So, a little, you know, feels nervous, but badminton must go on. By the way, I did get my wish. Lin Dan won last night, so he will play today. So hopefully I can talk to him. Jiang Jun. He is a China national team coach and he's a uh, former two-time winner of the Olympics gold medal in mixed doubles. break between uh, the afternoon games and the evening games and uh, AdCast are still playing but all the other games have finished so most people are leaving now. Bummer. Do you have any more plans like to, to try other countries or to um, work no. with other other teams? I think we travel players? enough um, yes, and they've do. all got their own uh, training teams to train with. So, but I mean now and again if we can go to some countries to do a week here, a week there, if we can fit it in the calendar we will. But um, yeah, no, not I, mean, I think that's a great idea, you know, because badminton is so international. I think like, you know. I know your competitors, but it would be great to yeah. kind of work together yeah. too. Yeah. 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 Okay, Thank so you. bummer, but right. keep up the good work. Hi. Wife, I'm a busy reporter. Amazing, delicious culinary Hong Kong, and this is my dinner. <laughs> It's break time, so everybody's getting ready for the nighttime games, and there's Lynn Dan.
Okay, let's talk about Lin Dan for a moment because yesterday when I went home early, it was a bit of relief because to be honest, I'm not sure what to ask him and I'm not sure if I have enough nerve to ask him. He's, you know, a little intimidating kind of guy. So I don't have a burning question that I want to ask him. And when I was talking to the stringer and he said, you know, when Lin Dan loses, he's not in a mood to talk to reporters after a game. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna talk to him after the game. I hate to lose an opportunity of, that's amazing like this, but I mean, he's a legend, <laughs> right? And I know that I've seen him. I've seen him a bunch of times now backstage here, but like, what do you say to a legend? I don't know, and he's intimidating. Like when I met Lee Chang Wei, I felt he's much more relaxed and friendly and approachable. But Lin Dan is not so approachable. This is gonna be the first time I've ever seen him play, so let me get to my seat. And as they play, maybe I guess with the results, I'll decide if I'm gonna ask him a question. <laughs> Hong Kong team playing right now out of the eight teams. Um, so obviously they're getting the support from the local crowd, hometown crowd, but obviously everybody's watching the Lin Dan game and everybody wants him to win. Every time he gets a point, the, the whole stadium cheers. And poor, you know, Anders, not a lot of people are cheering for him. <laughs> Point, everybody cheers and when Andrews gets the point everyone goes oh <laughs> Okay, it's not that I didn't want to ask him a question. I actually thought long and hard about a good question for Lin Dan, and I actually wrote on Reddit. I wrote, like, if you could ask a pro player a question, what would it be? Hoping that people would give me suggestions for Lin Dan, but the only person that did, somebody said, um, I would ask Lin Dan if he's happy now. <laughs> like, can I look Lin Dan in the eyes, like, put my hand on his shoulder and be like, are you happy? <laughs> you know? No, I'm not ballsy enough. Also, um, I asked my coach. I said, what should I ask him? And my coach said, ask him if he's losing because he doesn't want to win. <laughs> 
again, a little too intimate <laughs> for me to ask Lin Dan. Friend Lewis had a good idea. He suggested asking Lin Dan, what does Lin Dan see as the future of badminton, especially in countries where it's not so popular, like Europe and America? And would Lin Dan be willing to help out and do some coaching or some promotion in those countries to help make it more popular? And that's a great question. I was actually gonna ask him something about USA badminton because I know he's been to the USA Open a few times. So I was wondering if he's trying to promote it, badminton in that part of the world. But you know, he lost and that's kind of a bigger question with a bigger answer. And it's just like one minute and they're hot and sweaty and I just, didn't feel like that was the place to ask him. If we were sitting down and we had three, four minutes, that'd be okay, but here it's like one minute is all you have. So, what can I say? I'm a loser. <laughs> I didn't do it, I, I wimped out. Oh wow. So you know how Chou Tian Chen from Taiwan, he doesn't have a coach? His personal trainer sits in his coach seat and she cheers him on. And because she's not a coach, she, you know, doesn't advise him at all. But she is like the most enthusiastic person and I love watching his games because of her. So it's like awesome that like I get to see her and she's like just as cute in real life. <laughs> Just the cutest. How could you lose with her right behind you cheering you on? She's the best and the crowd loves her. <laughs> Congratulations again. Um, you guys have been winning a lot this year, which means you've been playing a lot. So how do you recover your body after so much playing at such a high level? Yeah, we just rest well and eat well, I think. Do you have a special diet or? No. no? Do you do any massage or anything? Yeah, sometimes. Okay, okay, well, keep it up. You're doing awesome. I'm gonna go home now, and normally this is maybe not a exciting thing, but now it's a bit nerve-wracking and uh, something's going on. I think I'm gonna put my phone away because um, I don't want to be seen as like press or instigator or or anything, okay? So uh, if there's nothing, I'll show you. If there's something, I'm just gonna walk as fast as I can. This is 
is right outside one of the universities and uh, it looks like they were setting the toll booths on fire. This is the uh, cross tunnel and they were doing that last night as well, but I didn't see it. So I'm just gonna move along, move along. Okay, there are some clashes going on. Um, I'm not gonna stick around and watch them. I did have to run for a little bit. There was part of the bridge and there was people kind of on the corner and they were going, run, 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 run. I think it was like an exposed part. I don't know, I didn't see police or anything. Meanwhile, right next to these clashes, people are just playing basketball. I feel like that's a little weird, but Maybe I'm overreacting. I mean, the protests are going on like right there and I don't know, the street's pretty packed. <laughs> and you know, it's nine o'clock at night and people are ordering burgers and milk teas and Hong Kong egg waffles. So maybe, uh, maybe I'm overreacting. <laughs> Woo. Made it back to my hotel room, safe and sound. But let me show you one more thing. Towards the end of the night, um, I actually ran into Victor Axelson's father and it was really awesome. Victor's dad gave me some swag that he had in his bag. Look at Victor's shirt in black and a shirt in white. Little tiny baby shirt. How cute is that? I wish I had like a cat to put this on. <laughs> the only problem is he only had small with him and uh, I am American, but let me try it. Whoa. I guess I'm thinner than I thought. I could fit into a small. Not bad, right? <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to be like <laughs> I definitely cannot fit into this cute little shirt though. <laughs> you think this will fit my fish? <laughs> situation might be going on now, I decided to take the harbor walk. It's beautiful and it should get me to the courts. Okay, really glad I chose the waterway because it turns out the protesters have completely closed the bridge and the walkway that is the only other way back to my hotel. It is totally blocked off and they're barricading it and they're spray painting it and uh, my friend told me um, they don't like to have their photo taken, so I will not be taking any photos. And here we are, semi-final days, very quiet, nobody's here. There are some great games going on today, Intanon versus Okuhara, Chen Long, I think he's playing right now, I'm a little late. Quarterfinal day is also my last day. I noticed this last year pressure gets higher and the athletes get less relaxed obviously because pressure's building that they're gonna win and the athletes that lost they're already gone so it's a bit quieter and tenser for the athletes and there'll be a lot more press I will let the professionals handle the semifinals and the finals but I still got the quarterfinals so let's go watch some awesome games Also, the quarterfinals is the ones that they start broadcasting every game. Uh, preliminary, they just had like one camera, so you can see all the cameramen. Also, starting with the quarterfinals, they put the speed of the shuttle, like the fastest smash. They put the speed on the um, TV, which is really cool. It is Friday daytime, so people are still at work. But during the quarterfinals, there should be more of a crowd. And I think it's the protests that are keeping a lot of people away. So 
surfing waves wow. into the night on the beaches of Hawaii. As the courts go from like four to two, and then tomorrow there'll be one, the lighting also gets darker because they only light the active courts and the rest is dark. So that heartbeat that they play when they call a challenge, it kind of gets like spookier and spookier as the courts kind of get darker and darker. That's where the commentators sit and uh, commentate on the games. Is that Morton Frost? I actually don't know what Morton Frost looks like. I've only heard his voice. Congratulations, awesome job. Um, so you were saying like before you don't have a team and you don't have a coach with you and you don't have a PT, like a trainer. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Um, in your free time, like your social life is like traveling to all these tournaments and playing. Mm -hmm. What do you like between games? <laughs> what I do between games? Are you um, friends with the other like yes, um, women players? But sometimes if before my game, I was not going out, you know. Just I was to just, like focus? Yeah, and, focus. and then watching some games and then some play, play some games, you know. I like refresh my brain. But after game, depends what time. Only I was just walking around. You know, I like the cleaning store. And, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> skincare. So, you know. <laughs> do yeah. you feel lonely or do you like I mean, the independence? Used to it. You do so. I have been six years. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's working. <laughs> I mean, with your badminton career. Yeah. Well, okay, awesome. Good luck tomorrow. Yeah, thank um, you. I'm not a very patriotic America American, but you're kind of changing me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Okay, there's a bit of a break tonight in the quarterfinals night. There's uh, almost two hours between the afternoon games and the evening games. So at Hong Kong, the player's hotel is right next to the stadium and the hotel has a mall. And last year, that's where Victor and Leaning put their pop-up stores because they are not allowed to put it in the stadium area because this is a Yonix competition. So I'm gonna have a look around see what I can see. I think these kids are just hanging out in the walkway between the hotel and the stadium waiting for pro players to walk by. <laughs> Honestly, you can stay at this hotel. I was thinking of it, but it was a little more expensive than the one I got, and the one I got's really nice. If you want to be a total fan girl, you can come and stay here. You can just see there's like badminton players everywhere. Some pro players, some coaches, some support teams, some fans. It's pretty empty besides all the badminton players. Yeah, bummer. This is last year. This is where the Leaning and uh, Victor stores were. I wanted to be here by my side, my it for me i am calling it a night um i really wanted to watch the okahara intanon game but um i am so exhausted <laughs> i just don't have it in me so i'm gonna go home now today was my last day very sad but it was awesome it was amazing and overwhelming and so exciting <laughs> some of the highlights for me um definitely uh, Ginting was a total surprise. I don't know much about him, but he was so friendly when I talked to him. Also, Sean Casey, um, Victor Axelson's physical coach, um, was so nice. We ended up sitting together a lot and we were just chatting. So that was very nice to sit and chat with someone. A highlight for sure is Zhang Bei Wen. 
I knew that I liked her and I did like her. <laughs> also, um, I didn't really get to talk that much to Victor, but um, kind of his whole team, you know, like Sean and also like I met his dad and I met this other guy that takes photos for him. So that was really nice. And um, I didn't get it on film, but uh, some of the photographers for Badminton Photo, they're the ones that do the BWF photos that you definitely have seen on Facebook and all those places. Um, they were really fun to talk to and maybe next time I'll get a video, but I'm just a little too tired today. <laughs> Making these videos, like you have to have a lot of energy and like when you're talking to a pro player, of course you have to be like energetic and excited and it takes a lot of creativity and I'm just so tired. If, if you watch my videos, you know that I've been sick recently and this has taken a lot more energy than I have. But there are some regrets. I didn't talk to Lynn Dan, but I I'm okay with that. I didn't talk to a lot of women players this time. I missed a lot of their games just because they were late or early or whatever. I'm not such a crazy person about pro players and pro games. I don't know a lot of badminton history. I'm kind of like a newbie in the badminton world and I really focus it. Oh, I just turned dramatically red now. But you know that I focus on badminton like from my own point of view and my own playing. And pro players are a big part of badminton, but it's not like my biggest interest. My biggest interest is playing badminton and you know, especially my own game. But I really love this opportunity because I've learned a lot about badminton. There's just a lot of behind the scenes people that you probably don't know or think about that are heavily involved and their career is badminton but they're not players and they're not coaches so they don't get a lot of attention that's always really interesting and maybe next time i'll do a video about kind of all the unsung heroes of badminton you know the protests were a bit of a bummer in terms of kind of preventing people from coming and making transportation a lot more difficult but you know see you next time hong kong mm -hmm.